Hello friends! For today's video, I wanted to chat through some books that were declined or rejected over on NetGalley. I know some of you are very familiar with what NetGalley is and ARCs and those sorts of things, but I wanted to provide some information about that before jumping into the books themselves. But I know for those of you that do know that information, you probably don't want to sit and hear me talk about it. So I'll have a timestamp that you can skip on ahead to just straight to the books. But for those of you that don't know, NetGalley is a website where reviewers can request ARCs, and ARC stands for Advanced Reader Copy. And the idea behind this is that generally you want some people getting their hands on books before they're out and getting some buzz. It encourages people to then pre-order books based off of what they're seeing from early reviews, or it encourages reviewers to, because they'll have their hands on the book early, they can hopefully talk about the book around its release date. And then not only does that help the author, but a lot of times the first week sales and pre-orders and those sorts of things play a big role in whether an author gets signed to write a sequel or whether they have a good chance of having another book that they can pitch to their publisher. So first week sales and the book's release and those sorts of things are a big deal and reviewers, that's the whole perk of being able to get their hands on these arcs is that they can then not only help the authors, but they can read these books without having to pay for them. It's kind of a win-win. A and I think like a lot of people, when you first go on to NetGalley, if you yourself are ever interested in trying it out, uh, be mindful about what you request. Because I think a lot of people go into it thinking, oh, okay, well, I'm like new at this. So I'm just going to request whatever and hopefully I get some stuff. And you will get approved for way more than you expect. And as a result, there is a percentage. NetGalley keeps track of how many books you actually provide feedback for that you've been approved for. And then based off that percentage, that contributes to how likely you are to get ARCs again in the future. If your percentage is very low when it comes to giving feedback, you're less likely to get certain ARCs. And if it's really, really high, you're more likely. But that's not a guarantee. You could have 100%. You could still get rejected for certain books. It just depends. I have a fair amount of books that I still have to <laughs> give feedback for. And then there are times where... I've had things rejected and I would have thought that I had, I'd have gotten them just based off of the fact that maybe I'm pretty consistent about talking new about new releases or because it's something where I've talked about that author's other works and I've, I really like those that author's other works and so maybe in my head I think like, oh, I'll probably get this one and then I don't and there will be some other random book that I will get approved for. And it's just kind of interesting to open it up, you know, kind of peek behind the curtain and see how the process works. So I wanted to provide some of that uh, that view, you know, through the peaking. What is a terrible analogy? I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, there's also the problem of every now and then you won't get rejected or approved. Something will just stay pending. And that for me is where I've gotten just a little irritated because what will happen is occasionally you won't get approved for something. But like I said, you won't get the rejection straight out either. And then so you're like, well, I could retract this. They do let you do that. But at the same time, I'm like, but if I do get around to it and then I get approved, then I can just go ahead and write the review for it. And and uh, sometimes you're like, well, I'm not getting approved for this. And so I'll just move on and I'll read something else. And then you will get approved from it way after it's already out. And then you're like, well, shoot, because now I have another thing that I've been approved for that I have to give feedback. And that's going to affect my that average of uh, the percentage of how many how many books you've given feedback to. So I'm actually going to start with one that's still pending, even though the book is out and I've since read it. And then also I'll get into some other ones. And I do want to say that I don't want it to come across like I think I automatically deserve to get these books. It is such, uh, it's, it's very gracious of publishers to send me anything. You know, even if it's a digital arc, not a physical copy, just a digital arc, I think that that is remarkable and I'm really grateful that I have that opportunity. And I just want to shout out Orbit because Orbit is probably my favorite publisher uh, to review for because of the fact that they have such a... they seem to really value reviewers and respect reviewers and so I really like... I, I and I like a lot of Orbit's books, but I just really like how Orbit conducts themselves. They're great. But anyway, I'll go ahead and start with the one that I said was just pending. And that would be Yellowface by R.F. Kuang. And funny enough, the last time I did a video like this, 
the thing that I was rejected for and that got declined was Babel. So I guess they just don't want me reviewing her book. She doesn't need any help, first off. R.F. Kuang is gonna end up on bestseller lists and she's very, very popular. So it's not like I'm sitting here like, well, you know, it would really help her career if they would approve an arc of one of her books for me or something. Like, um, but it is kind of funny that I've twice now, uh, one, not been approved and two, it's just pending. But I loved this. And I didn't, I don't mind that I had to wait until it was released uh, because I, I don't care. But it was great and I really enjoyed this. And it is kind of funny because sometimes the books that you get rejected for they end up being things that you didn't really like anyway. So you're like, whew, I don't have to try to force myself to finish that book. Because sometimes, you know, I'll get approved for an arc and then I'll start the book and I'm like, I kind of want to DNF this, but also I got an arc of it. So I feel like I have to keep going. And then other times you get rejected and you're like, I'm still interested in the book. And so you request it from the library and you pick it up and you're like, never mind. And you feel a little bit unburdened because you're like, ah, I mean, I don't have to do a review. So anyway, yellow face. I, it's, it's still pending the last time I checked. I hope I get approved for it though, because I'll happily write a review on NetGalley for it. After that, we have Last Tale of the Flower Bride. I did really like this one, and it seems to be kind of an unpopular opinion. It seems like a lot of people aren't loving this one from what I've seen since I read it, but I liked it a lot. And I really liked the writing style. I liked the play on fairy tales and folklore and the foundation that that provided and what we did with that and how we examined trauma and the effect on the mind and how we do that in a very abstract way. I just really, I liked the creativity of the storytelling with that one. But yeah, they didn't approve it. So, you know, and it seems like that's a pretty popular author too. All of these authors are pretty well known. Yeah, most of them. So there's a couple that are less, less well known, but that one I, I didn't get to repeat myself. Uh, Day of Fallen Night, totally fine with not getting this one because I decided I want to read Priory of the Orange Tree first, even though I know you can, you don't have to read one to read the other. But I was like, ah, okay, I'll read Priory before I read this one. And they're so chunky that it's not a big deal that I haven't gotten it yet because it's going to take a lot of time. And so I don't mind having more time to pick that one up. I would feel more pressure to pick it up now uh, if I had been approved for it. Uh, Daughters of Istahar, this is an example of one that I, I did DNF this one, uh, because I did check it out from my library once it was rejected, and I, I wasn't really connecting with it, that the tone was kind of interesting, I'm very picky when it comes to, if you're gonna have difficult topics and themes, but with a youthful voice, I'm kind of picky about how those two things blend together, and for me it just, I, I pretty quickly was like, I don't think this blend is really working for me, but the, the world did seem cool and the themes did seem very, very important. Uh, Mysteries of Thorn Manor. I really like Margaret Rogerson. I've read everything that she's written. I like Sorcery of Thorns. I was, I, you know, I know I said earlier that I'm like, oh, I don't think I deserve these, which I don't, but I thought I would have gotten this one. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I thought that this would have been one that I'd have uh, been approved for, especially because it's not a main release. It's not, a, oh, that didn't make any sense. It's not a full length novel is what I meant. It's a novella. And so I think that it's a little less on people's radar and people are maybe a little less inclined to run out and pick it up immediately. And because it's really expensive for how short it is. And so I feel like people, that might deter them from going out and picking it up. But I would think that if you approved, uh, <laughs> I don't know how many other people got rejected for it. Just because I got rejected doesn't mean other people did too. But if you approved a lot of people and they picked it up and they really liked it, I would think that would create more buzz for it. And then people might be more willing to give this tiny little novella a try. But yeah, I really, I really enjoyed it. And uh, that's one where I got it from the library. I did have to, it took forever to get it from the library though. But once I got it, I, I devoured it basically in one sitting. It was very cute. Uh, I didn't love it because it is um, it is kind of like a, here's what's going on after the events at the end of the, the book, the standalone, previously standalone book. And now I'm wondering if we're going to write a series and this is the thing connecting them. And I kind of hope so. I also got rejected for City of Nightmares. I loved this. It's weird. I feel like nobody likes it as much as me. I thought it was so much fun. By the way, because I'm going through this and I'm just talking about things that I got rejected um, if you're actually curious more in-depth thoughts about any of these, I'll have all the videos where I've discussed them in the description bar down below. But City of Nightmares is bonkers. It's, <laughs> I was about, 
uh, I was actually about to curse just now. Um, it's really out there. It's so weird and I had so much fun with it. And the idea is that people's nightmares can actually become real and they can go around and kill people and they can turn into something in their nightmare and they can go on a killing rampage. And so you're seeing the way that society has changed as a result of that. And yeah, it was, it was uh, not only really weird and creepy, but really funny because it was the way the author, the delivery of the character and everything I found very entertaining. So it's kind of morbid. It's kind of a morbid book, but I liked it a lot. Song of Silver, Flame Like Night. This one, I was a little sad about that I didn't get approved because I had just recently read another book by this author and I really liked it. And this was one of my most anticipated releases. And I'd been like, oh my gosh, this book. I was sharing the cover a lot. Not because I was like, they better give it to me or something. It wasn't, I wasn't sharing the cover and all those things because I was trying to get approved for an arc, but just because I was so excited about this one and, uh, and they, they turned me down, but it was very good and I really liked it and I can't wait for the sequel. And also these stupid covers are so pretty for all the editions. It's so good. <laughs> and then A Ruinous Fate is the last one. And this one, similar to Daughters of Izdahar, was a Phew, because I DNF'd this one. I thought the world seemed cool, and it reminded me a little bit of Throne of Glass and its tone, and the fact that its world does feel like it has a lot of different things going on, uh, but it just ultimately, it, it would just I just wasn't connecting with it all that much. I didn't really like the characters all that much. I didn't hate them. It's just nothing was really, really pulling me in, and so it was a little bit of a relief to actually not have the arc of that one. But that's a list of some books that uh, NetGalley I've been turned down for, and if you like the style of video, I would happily talk about other rejections in the future. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.